Keep moving. Oh, oh, oh. Wait for it. To stop. Come on. Take a break. Take a breather. Take a breather. Don't be a bitch. Take a breather. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is so fucking fast. <laughs>guys here it is the solo bloody tendril, tendril guys now we had to do a i died a few times on live stream doing this like learning the mechanics and stuff like that but we got it down to a t we killed her she's not actually that difficult when you get down to it and you know what you're doing so let's get on with the video um the main thing you are going to need 100 percent is where is it where is it Jog speed, you're going to want 65% jog speed. We did some testing. You can outrun her at 50%, but she will hit you when you are turning too sharp. I'll show you some clips soon, but when I say turn too sharp, I mean barely turning at all. At 65%, you can get it down, you can get a decent turn, because she needs to use the entire room. So you want 65% jog speed. That is going to be your main one. Um, after that, you're gonna want your mutated damage. As you can see, I'm at 67%. All the headshot damage you can get, I've got rifle headshot damage and um, some more headshot damage somewhere. It's not a lot, I think there is anyway. I know there's some on my weapon, weapon headshot damage. Well, mutated damage and headshot damage, that's, got, that's what you're gonna want. You can do this with any gun, honestly, honestly any gun. But one of the main things you're gonna want also is some weapons for killing Zombies and when I see you're gonna be like well, I can kill zombies with any weapon. No, what you're going to want to be able to hit 35 damage on a zombie All right, so if you go to my rifle right now, as you can see it does 24.3 so if I had 50 If I had 48% Infection damage on top of everything I've got now that'd put me to 35 point something damage you need 35 damage to be able to one-shot every zombie in the head in the game in, uh, over a level 25 area. So you're going to want wanting to get a built. So how you're going to do this is you're going to go into the tendril room, kill a couple of zombies, get out before she hits you, go back in, kill one or two, leave, repeat, repeat, repeat until no more zombies are respawning. All right. I've shown that in a lot of guides before. There'll be some links in description if you need some tips on stuff like that. Like to my beginner's tips, pro tips and all that. But yeah, you're gonna wanna clear the room. Now, the next part, this is something I didn't know you can do up until now. So, when you're fighting the boss, as you know, if you kill around 20 to 30 zombies that are coming through the doors, eventually they'll stop spawning. Something I didn't know until just now, is I can run around with Tendril, kill a couple of zombies, leave the room, you know, sort myself out, get myself good at then, go back in, do the same thing, kill a couple until it gets a little bit crowded, then leave. I'm going to show you a clip of this now. That for them zombies. There we go. When she stops, pop a zombie. The main thing is stopping the spawns. That's the problem. You see them big fat guys? They're the they're the main issue. Now we can't reload until she stops running. But we can run forever. This is why you go with Jogger and not Sprinter. Jogger is so much more efficient than Sprinter. Sprinter seems a lot better at the start of the game, because it is at the start, but end game it's trash. There we go. Get reloading here. Alright, she's got an hit there because it's zombie. Needs to try and make a bit of space here. Alright, but as you can see there, when it starts getting crowded, what you want to do is leave the room and then, you know, reload, get your health up or whatever, then re enter the room. It'll just be tendril because you've already cleared the room. 
Attack a shark tendril, start your fight again when one zombie comes through, try and kill it, so on and so on, <sighs> until eventually they'll stop spawning through, you know, they'll stop spawning. And then at that point, it is just you and Tendril. I mean, it's all about just outrunning Tendril. Now, the best way I've found to do this is the button that you hold to walk left or right. For me, left is A, right is D. So I'm going to run constantly left, like this. But you never want to, you don't want to like turn like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to turn too much. You just want to get a nice circle going make sure you get a feel for the room just like this when you see me spinning shooter like that you don't need to do that you can just outrun her wait until she stops sprinting get a couple of headshots off pow 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 and then that's it that's literally all it comes down to get 65 jogger make sure you've got fit you can do 35 damage damage on all the zombies and then when all the zombies have stopped spawning you can happily leave the room Put all your mutated and headshot damage back on, then re-enter the room and kill it easy peasy. She has, I'm gonna say around 500 HP. That's what I'm thinking she's got. I'm not 100% on that, I don't know, but I think it's around 500. So she's not got that much health. If you had something like a sawn off shotgun, you would do a lot of damage to the head if you was close. When she stopped sprinting, you'd run up, get one bop in her face, you know, like that 60, 70 damage, depending on how much you've got stacked. Maybe get two shots off, and then get a reload in, and then start sprinting again. That'll kill her very quick. Me personally, I like the rifle, that's why I use the rifle. So just remember, minimum 65 jog speed. Uh, make sure you kill all the zombies, you know, entering on, like, what I mean by entering and re-entering. So you'll enter the room, like so. I've shown this in a lot of videos before. You go pop, headshot, pop, headshot, leave as she's running at you. Wait for, like, the zombies will respawn, they might be different, they might be laid on the floor or whatever. You know, reload, go back in, rinse and repeat, pop, 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 clear that room. Then at that point, that's when you're going to go in, get a chase in you, kill the spawns, go out, put all your mutated damage back on, go back in, finish her off, easy peasy. Now, I'm going to show the rest of my kill. Like, I'm going to show you me solo in Bloody Tendril, this is on live stream, we did it all today on live stream, it was fun. You know, we did some testing for jog speed and stuff like that. We got it all down. I hope this video helped you guys. Watch how I do it. And honestly, you'll be soloing Bloody Tendril in no time. It's just getting the movement right. That's all it comes down to, man. Not turning too sharp. I should just to fucking attack. I didn't need to reload then. That was such a waste. I don't know why, I like panic pressed it for some reason. Sorry, I can't talk much, I'm concentrating so much on my movement. I don't want to fuck up now. No way! She died so easy! Oh my god! Dude, I thought that was gonna go on for about another 20, 30 minutes. Where's all the health? Bro, she's not even hard. What? How many shots was that? <clears throat> That's nice though, because obviously she's got a lot of damage, she's got a lot of speed, so not even too much health. I think he's balanced that out pretty well. Weapon body damage, weapon, weapon. That that's not too bad. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of bad, <laughs> but it's not too bad. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's a terrible weapon. Try and make a space here. Yeah, we're dead. Fuck, no range attack. No, no, no range.
Come on. But she has lower health than the Titan. Oh, that's good to know. 